on this episode of Rev It Up. We're hanging out in Detroit Autorama with our good buddy Thomas Estrada. And he introduced me to Johnny Jalopy, who I've been dying to talk to for a long time. And we have Rob Mariani sitting with us talking about all their cartoon history. So check it out. And action. And we are back at Autorama Detroit Riddler Awards show, uh, Killer Weekend, Saturday afternoon. We just got out of the booth with some great guys. Barry McGuire and of course Chip Goose and Legends, Legends, yes. and uh, now know, we're batting cleanup. This and now we're batting cleanup. cleanup. <laughs> so the guys are cleaning up outside. This crew was cleaning up out there. Somebody puked in the corner. I'm yeah. not really sure. But they were like, uh, do a podcast? yeah, the little guy in the corner over the glasses. You know, Rob was cleaning it up. You know, I said, uh, <laughs> officially the bottom and of then, the barrel. And then Thomas goes, hey, I know this cartoonist. He's down in the basement, but I think he'd come up. So you know. Um, so let's welcome to the show. You know, Johnny Jalopy is on there. And is on there. And Thanks. our Legend. good buddy Rob hey, Mariani from, uh, you know, the old, uh, okay. yeah, the old American Trucker is here. He's part That's of Rotary right. Media right here now. A real so, actual TV star over here. Actual, I, I know. It's just so weird. He was on that. there. So it's like, that was a big show. Oh, appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. It was a big show, man. It's just a big time. It keeps ticking away, and then you're forgotten. And you the just like, like being in your like, glass. Oh, I love God. reruns. <laughs> yeah. I stay relevant with reruns. <laughs> yeah. Hey, honestly, my show and everybody, anybody that's ever seen my show knows I'm so hyperactive. No way. The, imagine this. <laughs> I, so I, I was out signing some autographs at a place talking to this dude. And uh, he said, hey, I was just in Colombia. My wife's Colombian. And I saw American Trucker with you in subtitles. Can you imagine? No, I've done it. With subtitles? <laughs> There's no way. It's Portuguese. <laughs> There's no way it would keep up. It'd be like one of those bad Japanese. Yeah, horrible. Movies. I said, oh, I apologize in advance. I couldn't believe it the first time uh, somebody sent me a thing that was in Portuguese. I'm like, I don't. Right? Look, I look I'm bilingual, man. <laughs> I can go anywhere. Weird stuff when that it's amazing. It happens. Well, that saves me as an that question what you're from. <laughs> Ecuador. <laughs> and we didn't even announce Thomas Estrada, you know, because he likes hey. being on here more than anybody. Thomas Estrada. Like right. Oh. Yep. The, the rock stars. Oh, oh, got oh, graphics man. superheroes. No, right here. no, 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 no. There's no dueling ne needed. <laughs> Let's it's not even a it's, contest. It's totally a different level. Totally. Well, totally yeah, different level. The I'm man. just eating dust oh, back my here. God. I'm, I'm eating dust. Yeah. Whatever, man. <laughs> my dust podcast. Love yes. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Whatever, dude. Drama. You got your your stuff's amazing. Oh man, thank you. Likewise, I mean, I'm such a fan of yours, dude. Like you're. You're one of the few out there that still do hand-drawn art, and I love the cardboard stuff you do, man. It's just so fun. it's so cool. Like, Give me what, cardboard. What, what do you? So what do you use on that? Uh, just regular Sharpie and uh, Prismacolor pencils, if they'd like to sponsor me. Right. On. Um. Uh. Prismacolor pencils, uh, gel pens. I just started adding acrylic stuff nice. to get highlights a little cool. hotter. It, that is so killer cool. stuff, man. Yeah. yeah I mean, thanks, it's such man. a great, unique look, and uh, I'm I'm it's a huge fan. I can't. I don't. I can't take the full credit for like the first guy ever to do cardboard because I'm not. Dudes have been drawing. Yeah. Come on. Like half the hot rods that are probably out here started as a a drawing on a piece of cardboard, cardboard. or a napkin or something. Yeah, yeah. That's where it starts. Science, good. I'm sure. We were doing an interview with Pete Tundas, and and he told us a story that Gene Winfield uses cardboard for all of his. Oh yeah. He, that's I said. You know what that is? And needs nothing more needs to be said. <laughs> right. Gene Winfield uses cardboard yeah. templates to make his creations. That's enough said right there. That's like when drop. Yeah, I mean, they, Gene does it, and then you work with Ian all the time. Yep. He does it all the time. Listen, the, w before I was fortunate enough to be on that guy's TV show, uh, I remember watching one of his Back to the Dead videos, the $10 one, you get it like a, 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 a Pet Boys, right? You pull it out of the bin and go, yeah. oh, what is this video? Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah, home, yeah. I geeked out on it, <laughs> and he's like, you order, he uh, does a, a, a thing for his truck bed on Longshanks, and he pulls out this giant pizza box. Oh, and he's like, you got to make sure you order the large. And it was huge. <laughs> that is awesome, like, bro. I got to get. <laughs> so I started working on my own current project. And I was scouring. All pizza boxes are this big now. They're like four by four, six oh, by six. Right. Dude, everything got so small. Everywhere I'm at, there's no good pizza boxes. <laughs> so yeah. Ian's a big fan of using the cardboard template. Oh, hell yeah, he's a he, well, he's a fan of using just about everything. Right, <laughs> nothing he's is safe. Like Inspector Gadget, when I watch his show. Amazing. It's I went crazy. nuts on his show. He's just so chill. Is he that chill in real life? Absolutely, super chill. Like, uh, yeah, I, the first time I met him. Hey man, welcome to the show. How did you meet him? Well, uh, it's a long story. No, well, here's if, only, if we only had a podcast, I think we got a little bit of time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I had done this drawing of a Volkswagen and a hot rod together 
Um, one of my inspirations to that design is sitting in oh. this hall right now, the uncertainty. Oh, yeah. yeah. My most yeah. favorite hot right. rod built oh. by Scott Stevens, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, and that was, I love that car. God, I just yeah. Because it. it's just so weird and funky, which is amazing. So, anyways, I did this drawing. It was a mashup of like a, a, a split window bus on a T bucket chassis, which is kind of like what the uncertainty sits on, right? Mm -hmm. Sort of in a. Uh, yeah. Anyways, so uh, 2016 or 18. So it's floating around the internet, and I'm like, oh, no one ever want to buy a poster, <laughs> maybe a print. <laughs> um. Anyways, but I, I got a little following on Facebook, and so um, somebody of my followers shoots me a message and says, hey, you're not gonna believe this, man. Ian Roussel just posted a picture of one of your drawings. Oh boy. Wow. And I'm like, what? Awesome, Jackpot. Man. Yeah. I was like, what? Yeah. So I'm yeah. like, no. So I scroll and I look. I, like I had a phone. I didn't have a phone. So I'm on the computer and I look. And <laughs> how, I go, how long ago was this? Yeah, I, was, I pulled up my pager. Yeah. yeah. Boobs. I got I got buzzed. <laughs> Boobs. My oh my gosh, I remember that. Hold on a second. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna make a call. Everyone was so cool. They were like, let me get a cool cover for this one. Yeah. My pager. Anyway, you young kids have no idea. Anyway. Um exactly. so I, I I look and sure enough, there's my drawing on his page and it says you gotta give the people what they want. Oh, and I'm like, who are the people and what? But yeah. so before all that happened, again, I found the, the DVD. I watched Back to the Dead over and over and over again. Yeah. Back in the MySpace days, I'm like, MySpace. please be my friend. <laughs> exactly. MySpace <laughs> days. He ghosts me. No, like he had thousands of friends back then. And uh, Johnny Jalopy was not one of them. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. <laughs> That's right. And then so um, I'm sitting there and go, man, I can't believe this. And then two sec, like two seconds, a minute or two later. Yeah in my inbox nice ian russell and i went oh my god oh boy it's on now it's so cool so i open it up and he's and it says hey i don't know if you know who i am no <laughs> no you're a hack <laughs> who are you yeah. uh but i have this tv show that where we build cars and stuff and uh there was a drawing that one of my clients gave me that is like your uh that drawing that you did has your name on it i'd like to get your permission to to build it wow <laughs> oh, so man. killer man yeah, that Congrats, was a, like bro. pinch me more. Listen, uh, as a you know, as an auto, as a draw, uh, an artist. Yeah, and especially if you draw cars, having someone say, "Hey, yeah. I'd like to build that." Oh thing. man, you go what? Yeah. That's the next level. Holy what? And on TV? Yeah, super. Yeah. Wow. I, I, I watched it. I loved it. I, loved it. I, I watched it. I just was just showing the guys that we were on there and a couple of my guys and I told them who who are you going to be on the TV show with you know and I mean on the podcast here with and one of my guys like he goes I don't think I ever heard of him yet you know and I said <laughs> I said wait what Johnny and I said and I said you got to know this vehicle and as soon as I brought up the VW cartoon yep. Johnny Jalopy Johnny Jalopy yeah. this is what you did and I remember he's like oh I remember that I said that's the dude and I'm like yep. that's who that designed it and I said Ian made it in first and we're like oh my god and then all of a sudden he came over, I'm like it is just so amazing how the connection well, made this industry what was yeah. unreal was so he starts he goes I said yeah that'd be great so i'm like oh cool, cool i tell my wife she's like wow that's really cool i'm like I, you are not gonna believe i can't and then a, a couple weeks later i get a, a text message hey uh i'm at the i'm at the metal supply store i'm trying to figure out uh from uh, ian this yeah. is <laughs> i'm trying to figure out mesh, the mesh on the on the grill what do you think i got these three things i'm like why are you asking you're is he got, like calling you from ace hardware or something yeah. real dude well, he, i'm God, at the spaceship so store so what do you think of this I'm wow. gonna get do this. What do you think of that? I'm like I, collaborating. Then he sent me photos of the frame, the body kind of sitting on it, and I'm like, well, actually, here, <laughs> here I go. <laughs> actually, Ian, um, it should be tilted more <laughs> to the front because that's how I drew it. He goes, since you asked, Roger that. I get a message back. He goes, what about this? And he takes a photo. It's and he fixes it. That's and I'm like, wow. I, what? Here come the producer. My, my input is, is so sick. So, awesome. um, that guy's so real, though. That's, that's what's that's amazing. Cool him. Yeah. Then that gets better. So then that keeps going on for a couple oh, wait, months. Wait, there's more. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it, it, he's sending me photos of the progression. And I'm like, I can't believe this. The thing is turning into that car on photos. And of course, they're filming it. So it hasn't, nobody else has seen it, but I'm seeing it happen in real time. Yeah. Right. And then he messages me, hey, uh, what do you think about coming down to be a part of the show? Wow. I loved it. I loved it. You, what? you were that natural. So, on yeah, when too. you got on the show, I'm like, that is so cool that he brought you on the show. I, yeah. It almost seemed at not. first like it was a tease from the producers, like it wasn't really going to be a real build. It, uh, it, the way I remember it, it this is when you came in, it was like a slow boil. It was what was really crazy. So I, I show up the day, 
I can hear them in there trying to start it and get it running. I'm outside in my rental car. The, the producer Brooks comes out and he's like, "Hey man, I'm Brooks, I'm the producer. Blah 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 blah. Let me put this pack on you." <laughs> Apparently, he's uh, just as chill as Ian. Super chill. So he's a great guy. Brooks is the best. And then he's like, oh, um, "We're gonna go, and then you're gonna come in. We're gonna introduce you." Blah blah blah. Oh, okay. So we go in there, we film that part, we break, and then we start talking. And they're like, "God, thank God." I'm like, "What do you mean?" We thought you were going to be a jerk. Because oh, no, <laughs> yeah, you know, most awesome. hot rod artist guys sometimes, right? Well, sometimes can be jerks and very heady. <laughs> yeah, they were afraid I was going to yeah. come in and go, "Oh, well, I guess you know who showed up now." Yeah, exactly. But I, they were like, "Wow, you're really nice." And wow, awesome. So and that made the 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 uh, relationship was like that broke the ice. I'm like, "No, I'm I'm just I'm just happy to be here. Whatever you yeah. want to do." Yeah. 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 I'll hold, do you need more lighting brought in? Or, <laughs> I thought it was that great. It was so very fun, organic. It, 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 yeah, it was fun. It was really good. I really Super liked cool. it. But that's the in the in the true essence of the way that show gets filmed. Again, you you can yeah. understand. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of oh, oh yeah hey, behind can, the scenes. Can you guys watch magic? It? Let's do that one more time. Yep. Anyway, and let's do one safe. You're like I can't unweld that. <laughs> exactly. Um, but it was it was very cool. They were just very like, hey, we want it to be as real as possible. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's why I, I love that show. Wow, you know, Anyways, uh, where uh, is the car now? <laughs> oh boy! So as you stated, people know about the car, right? So yeah, that car. I feel like, as much as the uncertainty has been, it's, um, you know, like the essence of what it became. It's becoming the uncertainty, which is right. it's in Canada somewhere. Okay, I know the guy that owns it. It was taken apart because we broke the rear end in the in the midst of the oh. of the reveal. Yeah, in the we magic just, of television. And he was gonna. <laughs> and he was yeah. We rolled it. Does that and really happen? So then he was like, "Uh, I'm gonna take it back. I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna get it. To, I'm gonna start. Man, wait till I start putting in shows." And it didn't make it one show. It's in pieces. Yeah, wow. It pieces. would fit right in over here next to uncertainty. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You know, uh, uh, speaking of uncertainty, you know. Um, Shutton came by a little oh, while ago, God. and I was talking He's to him. Amazing. And I had mentioned uh, I was congratulating him, and we were talking about you know the the windshield got all smashed, you know. Just yeah, the way over yeah. here. Yeah. But he told me, you know, because I was thanking him again for having us when when uh, Motor Mania and Dagger, Dagger, yeah, we all went man. to Galpin, and um, he said, uh, "Well, you know that uh, the uncertainty was there when you guys were there." Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> did he really? I, yeah, oh, I was like, what was it? He's like, "Oh, I had it hidden away." That's me. He's like, "Yeah, I had it. Oh, it was there the whole time Dude, you guys Dave, were there." Dave, I'm. You know what? <laughs> right. Dave, we're gonna talk, and we're gonna get you on the show later, and then we're gonna we're gonna talk about some serious part. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, he, he announced more... it like a week after we right left. After we or left. Something, right I, after. I kind of figured because he did that, then he did what's his, uh, Scott's uh, Scott Ian Scott Ian's birthday party after we left. Right. And it was like the week after that, the dude announced like, "Oh, I found the uncertainty." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah. it's like a garage." Uh huh. And I'm yeah, like, there's no way it. he confirmed. Well, you know, that's how I got uh, introduced uh, to Shutton. He first contacted me um, a few months ago to do that uh, artwork for Scott Ian. He That's how you started, right? That's how the whole thing started. I, can you believe that? He messaged that me cool, and, and uh, he said, uh, <laughs> hey, can you do a Batmobile like Rat Fink? With uh, with Scott Ian, I'm like, dude, are you kidding? Yeah, like, of course, man. And I think, I, I think I cool. it. Yeah, it's kind of like getting a call from Ian, you know. So weren't yeah, we, weren't we earlier battling a who the, the artist? Yeah, I, Scott Ian's not calling me. Shudden's not calling me. I'm not, I'm not doing artwork for for Michael Anthony and Michael <laughs> and uh, Alice yeah. Cooper. Uh, I was going to say Alice Cooper too. Evil can evil. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> doesn't matter. Man. It's your yeah, 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 yeah. thing that you are absolutely yeah. going yeah. on your. You didn't write nope. nothing on Disney or nothing. None of it. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, yeah, work for Disney. Work for Disney. Yeah, Disney. Pixar's calling him. <laughs> I'm not at the Evil Knievel booth. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, none yeah. of them have well, built you any are. of my drawings, though. So you have that up on me. Okay, you're right. Like, but none of my <laughs> drawings have been made into a cut. Does he know that guy? Yes. Um, um, but yes. we all. Did you hear that? I think we man. Yeah. We all know John Bagley. I know John Bagley too. If he's yes. the man, what? In fact, that's a great idea. What? What? Out of all the drawings, what one do you think would be the best build, or one? Oh, to have one yep. build out of my drawing? Yeah. Holy smoke! Oh, put him on the pressure. Yeah. Unfortunately, I haven't created a lot of them. I'm usually redrawing other people's vehicles. So, like the Michelangelo, yeah. like those are all cars that are already built. Yeah. You know, same with uh, Alice. You know, Alice's and that kind of thing. So. You know, I would have to create something. Yeah, yeah. The sky cycle. His 
I mean, the sky cycle and turn it into a drawing. I mean, you know. Look at this. I'm rocking it right now. Yeah, it's there you go. Look at that yeah. artwork. I still it's see outrageous. the best thing. Look at that artwork. It's when amazing. we when, when we got Thomas uh, done, when we got Thomas on board to do some artwork for Evil, and we did we I don't know, we agreed like three or four drawings. Yeah. And the first two, I'm like, they showed me them over there, and they were like, yeah, you know, uh, Thomas is going to do this stuff, and I'm like, and they were all surprised to tell me like, you know, because I'm I'm the guy that ran everything, and they're like. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, let me guess. He did the rocket and the bike. And I'm like, well, yeah. And I'm like, I, it, yeah, I wasn't disappointed, you know? Sure. And I'm like, like, what do you think? I'm like, dude, it's been done to death. I'm yeah, like, you know? absolutely. And I'm like, what do you want to do? And I'm like, dude, we got to do I said, you know what? I said, do the dragster. I found the dragster. Make the dragster. Yeah. And everybody's like, really? And I'm like, yeah. So he does the dragster. He calls. He's totally pumped about it. Oh, yeah. How and then you not be? It's to do work with, with right. evil can eat. Oh, well, and then, oh, and then the best. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, the, and then the best part about it. They're like, well, I don't want to do one more. I'm like, so I'm looking at my toy case and my at my shop. This is just part of it, obviously. But I'm like, you know what, dude, you got to do the CB van. Oh, the CB, yeah. yeah. And so I don't know if you saw that, Johnny, but he did a I T-shirt. It's over the and for the CB. Johnny, van. you got to get. I got a shirt for you over there. I didn't even know what killer. it was. You're gonna love it. Shut I get up. this. I get yeah. this note from from some of the production team, and it said um, they they had the ideas uh, that that they wanted me to draw, and it said um, '70s van, and so I was like. Ding. Okay, 70s van. Okay. I guess they want like a 70s like boogie van, like yeah. evil Knievel he style. Didn't know, nobody knew what it was. I had no idea what I'm drawing. Great. And so then I sent it over to Bagley, and Bag's like, no, man, it's supposed to be the CB van. Like, what is the CB, CB van? van? It was so a toy. So he sent I me sent the him. actual toy, the photograph and like, of and his. Like, Dude, that's killer. I'm like, oh yeah, man, I'll oh, redo it right now. I'm taking a photo of it right I now. Say yeah. That was that one was on my Christmas list. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh my god, there's stuff I've never like this. Thing down here in the bottom. So I mean, yeah, seen that so Bagley was so, going like deep cuts, you know. So dude, the, uh, I'm like, you, know, check this out. Right. you had to do this. I mean, check that out. Dang. <laughs> is it that? Is I it mean, so aces, man? And Chrome, dude. You're yeah. a, you got to be a fan of Roach, right? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, oh dude, that's so cool. that. he's, he's and he did the he did the cane. He did everything. Yeah, I told him to put the cane there. So yeah, it's like the cane. So yeah, yeah, it was killer. So once he found out what it was, he's like, really? And I, I of course, I was selling like I was selling a toy like it was 1974. I'm like, dude, it was so cool. Like you'd take a little CB out of there because then Rob knows where we're at with the CB because American Trucker. I'm like, bring it on back, driver. Bring it on back, driver. And all of a sudden you'd be like, hey, you there? are you there? Are you there? And doing everything. Next thing you know. We're going through, and you could talk to Evil, and Evil would actually answer you on your right. TV. It was <laughs> nice. We thought it was real. We were so dumb. That's amazing. <laughs> evil was a fantastic man. Check it out right yeah. there. Thomas Estrada. That's Look the way. Nice. That's the way. You know. Thomas Estrada. Listen, the, the booth, the merch over here, I've been watching it for days now, flying out of here, and you got to be laughing and just loving it. Uh, you can throw that back. It's so crazy. This whole thing, you know, I, I, I tell, you know, my family, my wife all the time, I, I literally feel like, I'm nine years old, sitting at the coffee we're table. Nine years old, sitting at the coffee table with my little pens and pencils, so and I'm drawing like hot rods. Up here. And the fact that I'm doing this now, <laughs> it's just unbelievable. Working with, you know, evil Kenny. Yeah, like man. The, it's like, I in my wildest dreams, I would have what? never ever imagined it becoming Wait, anything like I'm, this. I'm stoked for you, man. We, we talked about that before. Uh, like all the stuff that's happened, all the things that have been going on. It's, it's just been, uh, so cool to watch, El, fellow artists. Yeah, because oh, we we you know there's some of us that really try hard. Wouldn't you agree that try to help each other and oh yeah, promote each other and stuff like that. And when you see so many, you know, start moving different ways, you go at least for yeah. myself. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you've, we, and we everybody's this. just so we go, awesome. Good for that guy. Yeah, you know? yeah. A handful of you guys can do what you do. I'm I went to school for graphic design. I can't do what you guys do. I, you, I bet you could. I, no way, man. <laughs> right, Listen, probably just practice. You yeah. just gotta... Well, I did when I was a kid in high school. I was always mimicking Roach and drawing in class with all the smoke oh, yeah. and the tires and the headers. Course, and everything. We, yeah. we all that, that was our lives. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You we're bad at it. You were you were drawing it, but you guys were probably uh, way advanced. No, in those days, some of us didn't. Wait. Let me ask you both <laughs> you artists. Let me ask you guys this. So let's say it's I don't know ninth grade. Did you have guys handing you your notebook, their notebook, saying, "Hey, in between a study hall, could you draw me something on That's your folder?" That's what got me out of so much crap. You know, I That's went to awesome. a school. You know, I remember that, this. In yeah. Southern California, I went to a Pacoima Junior High School, and it was like hardcore, like barrio, like right. gangbangers, and yeah, just... there were some tough dudes. And then back in the in the mid '80s, there were this, like these hardcore, like metal stoner gangs that were popping up, like metal stoner gangs. They were Mexican. That's a whole new comment. Yeah, yeah. I, 
it, so you had like the the you like the traditional like vato cholos, but then there was this branch off. Dude, of the way the you just rolled head. it off your tongue, maybe oh. I can see you in the movie. I can Vato-trolo. see you being Vato-trolo. an extra in the movie Colors with like your thing under the thing. Like, <laughs> but there was this this sub genre of these gangbangers that were like metal suits, metal dudes, band. that were like <laughs> friend them because you're art. I used to draw them all the. Whoa. I would paint on their their <laughs> army yeah, jackets. Awesome. I would paint the Metallica and the Iron Maiden logos, and that kept me out of you trouble with these guys. Oh yeah, you man. Covered man. Because right. I draw Eddie, the... Iron Maiden's Eddie. I was drawing that on oh, everybody's perfect. jackets, man. I knew it. I, I knew it. I knew it. And that saved me through junior Dude, now, high and high school. Yeah. Now, now all of a sudden there's gonna be a contest for you and Johnny. Somebody's gonna draw Eddie here from uh, oh, Iron Maiden. It's, it's, there's again, gonna be a you, canvas here. Look at yeah. If you if you look at what he does, it, it's his uh con- like the people. We were talking about that too. Yeah. I uh, I'm trying to look, get better at drawing. Dude, Dude, I can draw mo- yeah, I can draw mo- I can draw monsters. Like give me a rat fink or a mo- weird mm-hmm. rough monster guy I could do that. But you get me to draw like that guy there captures his mustache and his glasses. Yeah. Uh, they're all going to look the same or they end up I go oh, rat fink anyways who cares. <laughs> but, you know what that, but that's where the editing comes in where some artists will They'll own that and say, dude, I can't do characters. Right. I can do the mechanical side, and some do. The worst ones I've run into are the pretenders that say, oh, I can do that. And then they're, I've seen their commissions. It's like, right. I went to graphic design school, and I don't remember the, sh- the elbow being <laughs> yeah, that way. wrong. Please they're, don't look at my, my autonomy. Is, they're monsters. No, I mean, one arm is yeah, always going style, to be there. You, yeah, your style is your style, and like, then you own your style. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I do. you have the duality. You can do the characters, caricature, yeah. and then the hot rod. And that's the my saving grace. You know, I mean, they, like someone like Johnny here, like just blows me out of the water with wow. the hot rods and his and, imagination is bonkers yeah. hot rods are to thick, create, I gotta get, to I gotta create get a design like you did and to have it built like that i mean i couldn't do that and, and so that four to, four times <laughs> exactly <laughs> and so that's when you know that, that's kind of really cool when you get into this uh you know the art world is everybody has their yeah. little thing you know For that sure. they find those little niches in and that's where i've been fortunate with my animation background i've been able to i didn't know you had an animation background oh yeah <laughs> wait till you hear this story wait wait till you hear right? the story yeah. go ahead well, oh, yeah. oh god i can't wait to hear that well so i started in animation in 1997 i worked for dreamworks i got my first start on the oh, Prince of Egypt. Hang, right. hang on Perfect. hang on a second who does this come off <laughs> What are you doing? Don't be doing that yet. Don't drop that. Don't wreck that. No. Oh, the mic drop. The mic oh, drop. Yeah. Oh. oh like if we get on the show oh, one time. One time I <laughs> drop yeah. the Can I? Yeah. I worked oh. with DreamWorks and Disney. Sorry. Yeah. And then you worked on what movie? Uh, all of them. I know. Disney. Like, uh, start well, naming them. Prince of Egypt, The Road Child Dorado. Yeah, <laughs> and he's like, start naming them. Uh, the Emperor's New Groove, Treasure Planet, Atlantis. Like, like the worst movies they ever. Uh, Max, yeah. Max, they, Max, Max, did you know any of this? Because I did not know what he just dropped over I, here. This is like Scud Missile stuff. I, I always, I always tell everybody, I, I know more about these shows than most people forgotten. What was so? <laughs> yeah. So it's like, gotta, so, and the other one is Over the Hedge. Can I tell the story? Over the Hedge, yes. Oh, uh, Johnny, go. So he, he. So I, knowing that he worked for DreamWorks, and we're, we're at a little, uh, Bible fellowship function get some friends over watching and we're watch we're watching prince of egypt right and i and one of the little girls that that fought, it's at my bible fellowship goes oh this is my most favorite movie ever and i'm like oh really <laughs> <laughs> i'm a good friend of mine really and so I, 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 I contacted you and i said hey would you mind doing a draw and he's like yeah man oh does a drawing for sends it to her uh so i'm always You're, thrilled to do yeah. when people that's, you know, a, good that guy, fans, that's a good guy right there a humble they're fans humble of the film i mean wait how can you not you know I mean, it was it, amazing it's uh that is wow. so i'm not gonna say i didn't feel like a pretty cool guy <laughs> to go oh you want the artist see his name right there can we pause the screen real quick see that name right there exactly <laughs> hold on <laughs> that is so and cool sure enough, he's like hey man I don't even know what time it was. I didn't even look at the clock. Uh, what so, what format did you do the animation? Did you like do your sketching cell stuff kind of thing? We, and then we started, started, and I started in hand drawn 2D animation. So we were flipping the pages, drawing yeah. iteration uh, frame by wow. frame. And Total then, uh, Disney stuff. And yeah, yeah. Like early Mickey kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, it was, oh, you know, really it was cool. the modern so. stuff, but like Prince of Egypt, yeah. Road to El Dorado, Emperor's New Groove, like those are all hand drawn. And oh, then we but, eventually switched over to computer animation. So that's like Shark Tale over the hedge and then a, just a billion v- video games that, I got into. Is that what was the pro- program that you did it in the, in the digital side? Do you- uh, Maya. Maya. The, I, the animation software. That's kind of the industry, industry standard. standard thing. Yep. I, I don't I For do. feature film and then for video games. I got I I went to school for graphic design in the 80s and then I, I got um this is a true story. So oh. I had this, 
We have, it, totally, yeah. No one's getting out alive. We're speeding towards the exits, including me. But um, we in those days, it was computers. We had computers in in, in school. Yeah. But I never took it because I was a screw off and I couldn't. I never didn't know. Oh how yeah, to turn on it was me. Yeah. So uh, when I got into when I got into early in art school, all your prereqs were drawing 101, painting 101, sculpture yeah. 101, and then all traditional. photography. And so I'm in these classes, and the community college, or it wasn't a, it was a university that I went to, it was a two year university called Wisconsin Waukesha on the, uh, and we called it high school on the hill. How was the but football I, yeah. team? No, I'm just kidding. There was none. But my, I, w- I met a g- couple of guys that were in the same class because if you're in the 101 stuff, you're freshmanville. Oh, yeah. But by the time we would get into the next semester, I befriended a couple of guys. One of them was this name. His name was Chuck Ernst. I'll tell you about him. He's an awesome guy. And so we'd be sitting in the back of, of 45 students in the back of the room with the easels drawing whatever the uh, still life or whatever it was. Yeah. And this is no bullshit. This is what we would do. We were always twisted. So we would draw like the still life. And then all of a sudden, uh, Chuck would take my pad and I'd take his. And we would draw dead Nazi war criminals oh, like no. in the back with helmets and flames and shit coming out of their eyes. <laughs> and all. And then we just kept passing it back and forth. And we would do these crazy collaborations. And all of a sudden, the, this Professor Penkoff, who's always high, he comes walking around all art slow professor. and he's walking An around. An art professor is high yeah, yeah, so. Exactly. Yeah. Right? right? Best kind. He comes walking behind us and we're thinking, oh, we're we're, yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're done. Registration's canceled. He grabs oh, grabs the sheet off Chuck's easel, walks up to the front all nonchalant and pins it on the wall. And he says, this is what I want. I want you guys to use your imagination. It's what you, whatever you see wow. there. And so it became this, wow. So then as time goes on, Chuck says to me one day in class, hey, I didn't ever tell you this, but I'm a computer programmer, or I, I taught myself mm-hmm. assembly wow. language in C++. Wow. So at that, it, so you're cool. talking in the late 80s. So yeah. I thought, wait a minute, you're a f- unbelievable fine artist. Oh, gee. What do you, yeah. you're, you're a total computer nerd. Right. Think, Absolutely. In those days, you got onto a message board. Apparently, somebody contacted him from Konami. That is in like uh, all the you know coins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, from Konami, and he says, "I got a job where they Konami is now. What they want to convert the coin op games into the home market wow. of, uh, of the Commodore sixty four and the PC floor. ground floor." And and he said, "I you you're going to interview tomorrow for an art as an artist." And I I looked at him and I was like, <laughs> "Wow, there's <laughs> laughing, you crazy guy." And I said, "There's no, I don't even know how to turn on a computer." He said, I already told them you worked on the PC and you're going to you know, on the Mac and uh, and you're going to work on the PC next. But it's going to take you some time. So I'm I'm crazy. I, no, I, I went into the interview verbatim with my notes and I said, yeah, well, I worked on the blah and I need a little time and <laughs> I can use deluxe paint. And I got the job. <laughs> So I didn't know how to go from drawing and painting to mouse keyboard and look up. Right. A total weird thing. Yeah, when, you're it is. Artist, when you're an artist, it's like, oh, but I picked it up. And I think the the aspect of the pixels and the square stuff became a challenge where you only had four color graphics in those days. Oh. So if you had to draw a character, you could draw the block character. Right. You zoom out and you look with the, by the time the resolution comes on, it sort of blends it in. Right. Yeah. I, just, I just picked up the art of pixels. I ended up working for Sega, Atari, THQ. Oh, I did Batman Return, Red, Red and Stimpy games. I did tons of games. Nice. The Mask with Jim Carrey. Why? Why did you guys have me on there? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, <laughs> honestly, I, you, I, the you, I guarantee you that you could drive in the same environment. Oh I guarantee it. I'm totally. just sitting over here, and you know, you know, we have Johnny on. I, my whole presence of this whole episode was to have Johnny on, and you know, you guys are just like, you know, like, <laughs> like oh, I, I was doing, I was doing for this. Thomas was for Disney, and I'm like, you know. Well, wow. gonna... hey, anything to do with motorsports, look at Evil, is g- g- the design and the graphics are prevalent, uh, and that's it. That's how it's sold. Sure. NASCAR, doesn't matter what it is, art starts it all. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, I agree. The, the, whatever you buy, the T-shirt or anything, it's got to come from yeah. brains like you guys. And it, it's it was just a weird parallel, but I got out of it. Eventually. Oh, yeah. You know how I got out of it? We ended Girl. up licensing. Girl. This is another. What, this is what our bosses would say because this was really the fledgling days of, of video games, and it, it, they started to evolve when I was into it in the '90s and Super Nintendo and all that. We started mm-hmm. right. these games, and the more the processors were faster, the more graphics. And as an artist, I'm like, oh, I, I can have four palettes of sixteen. Oh, <laughs> awesome. And that, but it was weird because yeah. 
the part of my brain is not the math brain. So your art, you had to submit to the computer program. Yes. The program uh, would run it through his compilers and then say, yeah, Rob, uh, you got to redo all the frames on level four because you've got an odd color that's in there that the thing oh, yeah. picking up. And it became like crazy. Oh, we yeah, because I, I worked in video games like after feature film. I was on, uh, you know, I worked on God of War and Gears of War. Oh, my God. Uncharted. <laughs> Here it is. The dropping of God of War. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That goes way back. But it was all. I, wor I worked on a large pizza. Uh... <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, I'm like you. I'm, I'm like with you right now. Large pepperoni. I, like I, I work. With, I'm like you. Like no, I work for Little Caesars. So we can. We, we can. I got cardboard boxes and count with you right now, dude. I'm like I had hard class. But... I worked on a spill on aisle four. That's why you asked me. To come. Yeah, I'm like that. Yeah. But it was oh all that. God. I mean, the studios were half artists and half programmers, wow. and we would supply the assets, the animation. Like, oh yeah, weird. The programmers hated us yeah. because we were always screwing up the code. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, we would have to submit our animation to the programmers and they would write the code and they would put things like apply like uh, gravity and weight so if we did a jump animation yep. they would write the code that would launch the animation uh, across the the, the playing field yes and so oftentimes though we have to keep going back and saying could you give it more weight so it lands a little bit harder and pretty soon and bounce and bounce a little bit more and so pretty soon the programmers like slowly started letting us into their code and <laughs> telling us how to <laughs> press, like if you press this number so that we oh. quit bothering them. Uh, the problem is though, the in. that was the worst mistake because letting a bunch of oh, artists oh, into the God. code, yeah. we screwed everything up. <laughs> like you had <laughs> to awesome, roll back man. stuff all the time because they're like, and you would get these emails because they knew exactly which artists did it because yep. they can trace it back because they're computer yes. wizards. Yeah, That's so, cool. so you'd get these emails like Thomas Strata screwed up the code and we're going to have to roll back. <laughs> oh, it's uh, three three out there, right? Oh, yeah. It was a, like the walk of shame, you know, when you screwed up the code. So finally, the programmers wrote this watered down paint by numbers, like connect the dot, big color buttons. And they nice. wrote this program romper room for romper room, style, romper room. Romper room. code editing. And they rolled that out to the artist like, OK, oh. if you want to change anything, put, push the big red button <laughs> and then connect it to the big, the other big red button. And so they made this foolproof like code editing software just for the artist to use so they would the evolution so we would stay away from their their yeah, because the back brain guys aren't the you know their left brain right brain is like right, they'll right, work right. together but mm, this one's more dominant yeah so they could do the code but they couldn't always see what animation looked good like how awesome much weight it needed so that's where you had this collaboration with the artists and the and the programmers that's crazy but so, yeah so for you going back to doing your 2d stuff is your that's your that's your meat and potatoes. That's, your, that's your, been great. Yeah. yeah. Like when, so when I, you know, when I resigned, I was with WB and we were working on the last, uh, this Hogwarts legacy. I was with game. WB <laughs> Hogwarts. Yeah. But when I, resigned, I was the elbow him. <laughs> but when I resigned, <laughs> I, it was, to, uh, to more it was just yeah. draw, you know, I wanted to get back to drawing and yeah. painting it. Well, that was what the does. Yes. And yeah. So that's where, you know, well, it was it was great what, for me to get back to 2d and just drawing. And I, I, I draw a lot on paper and cardboard, which is what you see me doing a lot of now. Yeah, yeah. I love it. When I first kind of got into like the culture of like hot rod stuff, I was doing a lot of digital stuff. And holy cow, did I get shit for that mm -mm. in the beginning? Yeah, all the really? Old dude, oh, all oh, the yeah. all because the old you were like, you were in general. Because, hey, yeah. We, yep. no, no, hey, you don't, we don't take that Photoshop stuff down here at this. Yeah, boy. Hot rod website. And I'm like, I'm just drawing hot rods. What's yeah, right? Really? Because I was, it was my first, I was using Y compad and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And so I was like, wow, I'm getting really a lot of heat for this. We're just trying to I better, I better start working on ink and pen and, and doing that kind of stuff. So, but you're killer. I tried with to go, both I tried it, to go balance of both. But it's the do. same thing. They just didn't know that the uh, the, the digital well, pixels is really a marker in, in a lot right. of ways. Yes. Yeah, they just didn't know, a lot of people weren't right. understanding. Well, what, it. Right. What's Absolutely. What's awesome is, is over time now, because I've, I gained that, that, I didn't stop. I didn't let that stop me. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm hey, this is what I'm doing. And right. it's cheaper than paper. Yeah. I don't have to buy stacks yeah, of paper. Right, right. Yeah, right. I can yeah, throw it away and draw, throw it. Or save file. Oh, or reproducing, right? Yeah. Reproducing is the best. Yeah, right. So anyways, for, so to try to do this as a business. Cut, paste, flip. Yeah. Or yeah, flip, yeah. Flip. there we go. Yeah. JPEG. Boom. But that's why right. I admire you because you've got that down where you can do both of those. Like, I can't Thank do... Man. 
it's funny because I if, haven't worked in computer animation, but when it comes to digital illustrating, I couldn't do it to save my life. Like I'm just not good at it. So what, everything that I do is traditional. Yep. So I admire you I because you could though, if you have in the background that you have, like you were talking about the, the mouse yeah, mouse and looking at the screen, screen. screen, screen, like when I started in digital, that was, so it was Wicom pad and the screen and you're looking at, pad, I was like, how do I, I was like trying to draw my stuff on paper and it then try to, job. I was yeah. trying to trace it. Yeah. Like it's, oh, the pad's too small, but after time, you get used to the what's small we, movements of your wrist. What's things. weird. I then went back to, I saw uh, my wife for a Christmas gift bought me where I could draw on the screen, a, a, a surface book. You know? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I oh, went like nice. directly yep. and I was like, this does this was not made feel right. No, I was like, I, I'm, I'm so accustomed to doing this, not looking what my hands right. do, ah. just seeing the cursor move around yeah, yeah. that when yeah, i went do, down do, do, do and, and drawing like directly. tradition i was like Act this old school. is not right <laughs> that's funny it's usually the opposite of that. oh it was so crazy yeah. he's like did i make a mistake i'm like no but this feels weird did you ever but you got it up down on the down. surface then did you get good with it oh that's what i no, that's, no, that's that's my now, now, now i is. want to buy one of those professional <laughs> ycom 37 he kills it on that giant like Johnny, I heard today that uh, Thomas is actually giving a free gift for sponsoring new students. So I think, I mean, of all the success, so I think we, I, I <laughs> vote. I don't know who else is on the board here, but I think Listen. I vote that you get, you get you one. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> I'll take it. Do you want to do it on the spot? Boom, you got it. Boom. I can bring us back to the Motor Mania stuff real quick. <laughs> yeah. how, how that got out. At, at that point in the where I was in the 90s, the the licensing became all the rage. It started to go crazy, you know, with Michael Jordan. Yep. Yeah, Apple, man. And, when, Everybody when, went nuts and, after that. Every, and and, and uh, Smartly. Blade, Blades of Steel and all the hockey games on Nintendo started to turn into right. Brett, Bobby Hall's this. And mm -hmm. uh, so we would, our boss would literally tell us, he, he'd give us three, four hundred bucks cash. He'd say, you savages, go get drunk this weekend. You better come up with some ideas next Thursday for some games. And we'd, yeah. we'd, go, we'd go skiing or snowboarding, drink, a, get a keg. And just get wasted and then watch tv and and then we came back and, and we said okay here's our ideas we had some sketches and we uh, we said we want to do monster trucks this is about 92 oh. at this point this is about 92. Mm -hmm. so it wasn't even Love close yeah it wasn't even close to anything what it became into monster jam now right but you in those days that was the tnt days you guys remember watching mm -hmm. on tnt oh that, yeah um yes, I and bet with, that. with all the cool am pm boss and the old heavy rigs and all the cool stuff in gravedigger dennis yep. anderson was the he had the short wheelbase he had the over under fonts and it was the the real gnarly you know yep. uh, s s uh grim reaper style yeah yep. but mm -hmm. he would crash and flip and roll on almost every tv show and we said we want to do monster trucks and it's got to be dennis anderson of grave digger and, and we thought okay here's what he said well we've got ten thousand dollars i said i'll take it so that became the for to me to tour to try to lure him in and then do a back-end deal because we didn't have shit for budget right 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 so we went i i make these in these days there's no internet we had a, a marketing book from the company that you'd you buy it, it cost like 10 grand and you could go through this uh flip pages of all the agencies that represent your disney oh, or whoever wow. it was so you had to kind of cross reference who wow. get to the how yeah so i got this guy's number i thought and i would tell everybody <laughs> all the other artists in the office and and i said well it's on me i'm gonna go try to land grave digger and so i I'm, i was all i was i remember going home and saying oh tonight's the night i'm gonna make the call i get a hold of his wife julie it was the right number and um that was his then wife julie and um, all of his kids, Adam Ryan, and they're all, all the monsters. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They were little bitty kids at Probably this yeah. stage. Yeah, okay, sure. I've known them since they've been boy, like four years old. That is so cool, man. So he, um, I get on the phone and I say, "Listen, my name is Rob Mariani. I'm with Atari, and um, Atari. We're, I'm an artist, and we're nice. we're, we're doing." Oh, and there's a mic drop. There's a mic drop. Remember the <laughs> remember baby. links, the handheld? Oh yeah. yeah. I was doing links games. Nice. So I, I said, "We we that is so cool. We love monster. Well, what you're what you're doing with the monster truck, and and we want to see if." maybe we could do a deal and and they were like wow okay and at this point he'll tell you it was gooberville at his operation oh, sure. oh, it was complete gooberville we were gooberville in the, what we were doing <laughs> right. so here i am calling him from chicago and and so i i hit it off with him and we ended up doing this deal where we were gonna do a back-end deal he said we'll take the this we did the contracts and then everything is rolling right along and all of a sudden in the middle of this our boss sells his uh branch gets acquired by thq mm -hmm. who wanted really? to do in-house 
they at the time you do you guys remember THQ games at toy headquarters they were they dominated the Nintendo market yeah yeah even if you didn't know their brand they were like Blizzard software or anything like that made all the whatever games right so th they just wanted to have some quality control and so they acquired us this sort of elite uh or not elite group of idiots that can make games in Chicago they have product makes sense so they bought us to make help them because they lost all the quality control they were farming it out to people they were losing all this money on contracts their game sucked as soon as you buy a game that sucked in those days oh, it was through the game review magazines it was like this you're game done. you're done yeah, I was yeah. you'd say this game blows out talk yeah the box is cool <laughs> they it out yeah. but then they wanted but to start we right, self publishing right in this pocket wow. so yeah. I I tell um, Dennis Dennis uh, we've been acquired and now I have to repitch Gravedigger the game to them and and we had to start over he said well all right we well, said all right Rob we'll do it so we, I'm like Dennis we go back oh Dennis is the great greatest he so we he so, said he always want to write me a we, check we go back to the drawing board <laughs> better be good too I repitch their new now I'm pitching the L A uh uh marketing side of thq they're a they're the third largest Nintendo right, right, developer right. i'm like uh david versus goliath oh, yeah. i pitch him with what we have we don't even have anything that's really coded that we had some rudimentary truck drawings that could roll across the screen wow. and some graphics and they said all right we're gonna do it two months later well we decide we're gonna pull it so i have to go back to dennis now i yep. the third time i say dennis there's no deal i am no longer uh we don't have a game i said but if you want i believe in this so much I could come and work for you directly if you let me use your license because I'm now Rob flying solo. Right. I said, and I can go pitch the other companies. He said, all right. So I met him in Indianapolis for the Thunder Drags. I'll never forget this. So we go to Indianapolis. I meet Dennis. I got or I, with with uh, I introduced Dennis to my uh, brother and another programmer guy I knew. And so I ended up leaving the game industry to go work for Dennis. So while we. What year is this? This is about 95 or 6 at this stage. 96. Yep. Okay. So right around. I, I leave. And now this is this is the best part. And Dennis, I have no problems telling you this because Dennis and I have talked about it over the years. When I actually got into the bowels, if you will, of, of his operations over in Kill, Kill Devil Hills and in Currituck, where he's county in, in the Outer Banks of North Carolina, where he's headquartered, we had at the time five trucks. Dennis would always do the major uh, big TV ones. Right. And then we had all those smaller markets with other drivers, Robert Parker and Right. Early Charlie Pawkin was one of the early drivers way back in but, those days. Nice. Yeah. And, and um all yeah, Charlie of, worked for him yeah, for yeah, a while before you, he tried Caliber. John, I know that you know almost all the same guys that would run those monsters that Dennis it was I didn't I started to, I knew them from the TV, but then I would yeah. get to know them from being right, inside right, right, a right. grave digger. Yeah, I was really well, blessed to grow up in the whole industry, although everything we've done so far okay. with all those guys. Okay, so this is beautiful. So so um it turns out where now I'm now I'm inside and I'm trying to use his license to get us a deal. So it turns out we were barely, barely, and I mean by pennies, making payroll for anyone. Oh yeah, I said it was a struggle. I said, "Where's the money?" I, I, he he owned sixty five percent of the novelty for Monster Jam. Yeah, his name, his recognition was it. Yeah. So I said, "Dennis, right. you're you're yeah, the Darth Vader up, so of yeah. you're the Darth Vader of Monster J uh, Jam." Where they were going, <laughs> and I said, "Do you remember when they did those alter ego characters yeah. on Monster Jam, and they have?" A predator, and they had like a guy that was dressed up as the predator, and they was on the TV at this point. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. This is right when this was all going on. Uh, so, I get all those toys. So, so nice. um, of course you do. So Dennis, so Dennis, <laughs> Dennis, you're gonna you're gonna love this. So Dennis, I said, um, there's a problem. We have no money, and all of our merch. I said your four your four dollar foam goober hat with the with the sticker yeah. with his grave digger with yeah. a with a grim reaper. Yeah. I would never buy one of yours. I'd need a six panel slouch cap or something. I said we need embroidery. He's like, well, we can't afford embroidery and blah blah blah. And I said, Dennis, I said your this merch is going to sink us. And then oh, yeah. at this point, he was so adamant about not going on TV because. Now they all have the nitrogen shocks and the state of yeah. everything. Yeah. In those days, he was running the mono shocks with the coilovers. Yeah. And and that you know the, the trucks would do the right. bouncy bounce. There wasn't. And so he would like say, it is. "I'm not going on TV. I ain't going on TV, Rob. My shit's torn up. I can't race." <laughs> yeah. And he's yeah. a racer. That guy is a racing guy. Right. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So that's I said, well, I understand, Dennis, but we can't afford to get the new suspension if we don't have some merch sales. And if you're not on TV, we've got no merch sales. You're killing us. And he would argue you're with me, and dirt. he was crazy in those. He was crazy in those days. But the good news is. He was open-minded enough. So I said, what we need to do 
is we need to go back in and then re-up our contract, our performance contract with, it was SRO Pace that owned it in those days. And I said, we'll get the money for the, the new truck that you want to build because he wanted to build a badass race truck. And so then the my, going back to the graphic art, here we go. The graphic art starts coming in. And I said, Dennis, we need to add purple with your chartreuse and your black. And you guys know as graphic artists, those are gold. Com those are beautiful combinations. There's a lot of obnoxious. Yeah. They're really obnoxious. They're, they, they're pop. They're, they pop. I yeah. think we need purple yep. because I need to do embroidery. And if I only have your gray and your your black, I said, and, and, gonna just, and the red, I said, it's not working. Yep. I said, we need to add this and we need to freshen it up. And we're, when we change the, the truck, if we get the money. Okay, so here, here is this. This was the truck we ended up doing, right? right. Which was the um, hot neons that, and the super well, bright what, purples. What this was, and... though, was the new chassis. The fonts are, they used to be over under on Gravedigger. You oh, see, right, that's Gravedigger. right. That's right. And the sh when we stretched yeah. the wheelbase, we got the money. We got 100K or so from the uh, SRO Pace to build, let him build his new truck. Wow. And when he built this chassis, then I said, we need to stretch out the fonts. I said, I'm going to need to add purple into the paint shop. And he almost, I'm not, I have witnesses. Okay. That we were in the shop one morning. I'm holding my coffee, and he went apoplectic on me. Rob, I ain't changing the goddamn paint job. It's trademarked and blah, blah. He went crazy. <laughs> I, have to it. I understand. We're not changing it. We're evolving your brand. Yeah. We're going to try to get some new A lot new of people don't like that, though. Okay. No. Well, guess what? Not only like it, this is an older version, but look at what's in there. The purple yeah. and the and the fonts are stretched out, and that is my claim to fame. Oh, hey, nice. Wow. So you see the royalties from my bouncer jammer? Are you kidding me? I got nothing. I got the shaft. But that's the way it goes. But that's, Man, we, 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 there's that whole that's whole story. in our career. But that's it. You get exactly. <laughs> you but, do the major, like, look at what I did in this Thing, and it's this major deal. I had no idea we were like no. doing an intervention with Rob. I had no idea how long that was going to take. I'm like, I mean, is there like a wrap it up box coming up pretty quick? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm hey, I brought I you back. Brought it all the way back. Oh, oh, brought it all the way. You like took it all, all the way back. But like a mania, pro. like a pro. mania though is uh, that's everything that this is. It's the oh, it's totally all of these vehicles and and the, you don't realize the behind the scenes that yes. you see the iconic cars and there's always some. Johnny Jalopy, and there's always an Estrada behind the scenes saying, hey, uh, this is the look. And yeah. then you have to balance it with the big guy, the Johns. Or, so the, or they think because you're just because you're on TV that suddenly you're a multimillionaire. Oh, and I'm God. like, boy, that would yeah. be cool. Yeah. 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 Oh, that'd yeah. be really cool. Yeah. It's like, wait, like, what a check of that to come in. Hey, Johnny, what are you, what are you working on right now? What are you, are you doing, doing any more cars with you? Know, what are you uh, uh, not currently. They fit, I think they just wrapped up a couple seasons, unfortunately, unfortunately, without me. Um, there's yeah. more to come. Uh, I hope I doors can, open. I can hope uh, he has his own YouTube channel, but and him and I have kind of collabed a little bit on some stuff he's working on. Ian? Cool. You talking Ian? with Ian? Uh, I got a, my own personal projects I'm working on. Uh, started uh, uh, because of working with Ian for so many years. Yeah. I never really knew how to weld and fabricate. Yeah. Oh. So this last summer or summer? Yeah. Winter. <laughs> I live in Florida, so it's always never winter. Yeah. It's always so never winter. So yeah. You're yeah. Perfect. So. Uh, I started a project in March, had a uh, goal of November uh, to transform this Volkswagen that I had and turn it into a pickup truck and uh, teach myself how to weld, fabricate, do all that kind of stuff. That's, That's cool. cool then. Made That's my awesome. goal. So and we're see some, some of your creations down the road. Hopefully, that, I'm water. hoping that that's what will happen is I can start kind of building my own stuff and maybe, you know, things that are in my head, I can start execute myself. So we'll see what happens. That's awesome. What is your, uh, what's your goal to do on, the, you want to stay doing the art? You want to start building cars? Oh, all of it. I'd love you to do all of it. I, I don't think I could stop there. drawing. I would love to start building uh, cars and hot rods and different stuff like that. And yeah. Collaborating with people. That, that's the funnest part for me. I would love to, I like do, to collaborate. Yeah, I mean, it's fun to have, you know, another shopper or somebody say, hey, man, would you want to come? Have you, have you drawing seen some of the stuff that he's yeah. that bags has done? Did you see his? Uh, can I talk about the Road Warrior car or not? Yeah, go ahead. Johnny really doesn't know that much about me because I think I've, I mean I, I knew of Johnny, but I, we never got fully introduced. I, yeah, today, so I got us. I went to I his shop I went, in Jackson, I went, yeah, Wisconsin. A couple months back, I was at John's place in 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 West in uh, West Bend, Wisconsin, and he's got this car. He was doing it. Tell us what the background was, or can you uh, what that car? No, we can was. tell it now because now I own the car. So yeah. it was uh, oh, that's some awesome. a friend of my car. Yeah, because it's always like, can you tell? Can you I know, I know, it is. Yeah. That is one thing. I, that's one thing I can't stand about this industry. Is like, can you, don't, dude, I'm gonna be like, we haven't revealed it yet. The episodes come out in two weeks. Yeah, we go yeah. through, and all of a sudden you'll be talking to somebody live, and be like, dude, next to me, hit him. But anyway, right now, go ahead. So a friend of mine, amazing welder fabricator, um, kind of like a skill, like you know, uh, a lot of hot rods are built over here in Wisconsin because 
yeah. we go through and obviously you know we get a lot of good friends tom i mean uh, uh rob is from here too so wisconsin we don't get the luxuries that you guys do in cali or florida so our stuff goes away in hiding after like october right. november you know we got like six months that the people go nuts over here so a lot of things happen in those winter months when it gets down you know people get if you yeah there you go take a take a hey, picture take, take, so, take, take a look nice. at take a look at some yeah, metal, metal, metal. Metal. go ahead he's well, you're gonna love yeah, this yeah, story. Go through. so oh, that's a dog that's a dog yeah, yeah. Yeah. i only have one photo of it so, okay and, uh, so anyway so we go through a buddy of mine starts telling me he's like hey man i want to do a mad max car for the next movie that's coming up and i'm like well what are we doing and he's starts telling me about it. he's one of those with crazy wild imagination just like all of us are and you know yeah. it's funny hearing your art class stories because i did art for four years in high school with a good friend of mine andrea there you go, bro. And, oh dude andrea who takes care of our website andrea strong good friend of mine friend for 15 years we do all stuff she's so we that's how we met when art class but anyway so and i've always drawn does my own things too but not the level that you guys have obviously but so anyway so he tells me he's doing this car and he comes in and in my shop and I got a pretty oddball shop too. It's like a uh, like a kind of a museum. My whole thing is kind of fun. And it's Mad Max toys. meets the museum meets. I don't. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I collect <laughs> toys. This up. I mean, I have a huge showroom with the toys and collectibles, and we have. And then I've got an old school shop. It's an old pole barn, but it's got all old, old uh, signs and oil or uh, oil and gas stuff all over the place, and just a lot of right good stuff. That's cool. Um. So anyway, so we started putzing around with this car, and he tells me he wants to build it, and I said, "Okay, cool. What are you doing?" So I leave him alone for a while. And he takes a 79 Camaro and he cuts it up like you just saw, you know, and I'm like, what are you doing? And next thing you know, he takes a 2500 Dewey chassis and cuts it up and he puts it in a Dewey. Dewey car. I'm like, what? Okay. And then on, he a just, Camaro. on a Camaro. And this guy is like, <laughs> he is a non fiberglass, non Bondo dude. You can see that's all oh, metal, like, all like, right. Totally. And I'm like, all right, so what are we doing? You know, and I was, and I was talking, I was talking to DJ and I'm like, so man, I'm like every year time, because I'm always known for doing barn finds. That's what I'm known for in Wisconsin. I find them all over the country and some of the people are wearing blah, blah, blah. So cool. So then he's like, what do you got at the shop? And kind of like you guys do at Ian's, like anything in my shop is fair game. You can have whatever you want. Right. So he starts, I want to put this on here. I want to put a 70 front clip on it. And I'm like, what? And also I saw it one day. I'm like, dude, what did you do to that car? <laughs> I'm like, it was it's... a cool car. It was an SS car. And he's like, well, and then, I, then I saw the monster fender flares and all like that. And, and I'm they're a monster like, 2500 size yeah and i'm like dude it was so cool so he started collaborating with the people that had the mad max movies there, okay you know? and then he was like yeah i want to bring out it was going to go in the whole thing and you know whatever life happens do whatever so he had the paperwork and everything good next thing you know he just got rid of the car and he got rid of the whole garage and the shop and like life changes and he, and wow. he changed it all down and basically what happened is we ended up getting the, a car and acquiring the whole shop so now i own that car nice and uh, so many people have asked me to buy it, do whatever with it. It's wicked. And, uh, and I won't, yeah. I, I won't, I mean, a lot of guys, because we know a lot of people in the industry, I'm not going to say their names on here now, but he's like, dude, I need that car now. I need that car now. I need, <laughs> I need to, I want the motor and training out of it. I want to do it oh. get even next year. I'm like, nope, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. So now it's going to be more in Tilrig. But those stories, like, I run across it all the time. And it's just crazy. Like, even DJ, the guy who created the car and did it, the art that he did, he drew that all up with cardboard like you that's all awesome. wow that was so cool because all those big it's old metal school. players and kind of yeah, man. so cool bro it was it was awesome so yeah that's i love i mean it says so your talent goes way back i mean my dad when you said you were doing cardboard cutouts uh even a good buddy of mine that's sitting out here right now mike waltonberry he does stuff too and he does a ton of stuff with cardboard cutouts and building frames and chassis and stuff yeah. that's how i actually learned how to do that is Dude, because cool. when we would do stuff and I, you know i went to germantown high school so it's like when we were doing stuff back then and we would make templates or anything for our high rods, it was cardboard like that, you know? Right. And it's funny, the totally funny thing with you and Ian in the cardboard box and the pizza. <laughs> Dude, back in the day. Geometry is geometry. Geometry is geometry. Ape, you know, ape, air squared equals feet squared, you know, whatever, dude. Let's just do it. He lost but, me there. I'm an, I don't. Yeah, I'm a math guy too, whatever. But it's like. I'm not. But it's like, so, but it, like back in the day, the pizza place for Pizza Hut, man, you sit down with a red cup and do whatever and then but you go pick it up you got a monster pizza box because if dad wanted pizza and my brother <laughs> that's a fender it's a fender dude it's like a fender uh, my brothers would be, able, be building bikes in the shop so wow. that would just be all the templates that they would use and my brother would just start flaming out stuff and so we got you know the background of this industry going back to why we started doing this whole thing you guys they think it's just drawings that you do they think it's funny things that you do but then when it turns into a car it turns, right. turns into the uh, on there that's right it all starts somewhere a bunch of dudes just talking and bs and, and like yeah. just look at my wall i mean like hey man draw a picture and they start doodling and it's like i think i'm gonna build that 
and all this stuff. Look at, I mean, look at, we've been to Shelton's place. We've all been there. Like, yeah. Right? Come on. I haven't. I mean, come on. I mean, I, I've like, never been either. Oh. But, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we're, yeah, we'll be in Thomas. Yeah, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> but I've seen, I've seen everybody else's photos from that place. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm like, dream. How do you get an invite to <laughs> yeah, that? How do you get into California again? Yeah, 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 I don't know how you get there, but everybody's been there. Except everybody's been there except you guys. Not in Tilapi. We yeah. haven't been there. Or maybe we'll just have to make a trek and we'll go. Maybe like, that's it. We're going to have to go. You know where we went? Bagley. Galpin. Did you yeah. go? Not how we did. Not how we did. I drove by, by there. But but even the fun stuff, like like you're talking, like you're down, you're hanging out with little daddy right down there. Oh, it's the best. And his stories are epic about how he used to build models. And how they used to do it back in the day, and how they used to sand bondo and clay off the oh, cars man. and all this up and build it for, they were they were the first model kit builders, and yeah. they were selling them down there. And I did a podcast with that dude a couple weeks ago in Tulsa, and I've been a fan of him forever, you know. And just just stories that that cat yeah. got. Is he saw unreal. he saw right. the, you know, the beginnings. Of, I mean, it. again, for me personally, when it comes to hot rod, Ed. Ed Big Daddy Roth is the man. Hence his right forearm, dude. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, rap, rap really good. Roth all the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's sick. Man. You're all aboard. Like, and and what's interesting to what I find funny sometimes, we're down there. This is my second autorama. We're down there, and I watch these young kids walking by. They got Rat Fink stuff on their shirt. Oh, and they, it's, oh, it's, and they walk right by Dennis, and I'm right. What are you? I'm doing? like, that's little daddy. Yeah, you, poser, oh, poser. you don't know. It's not, <laughs> I, your, it's not your fault. Your parents raised your girl. Exactly. <laughs> Best story to retract to that is my cameraman, Norman, was going down there, and I'm like, so we're walking by, and I went over by Daddy, and we're, we're are you with me? Rob? I was there. We were there. So next thing you know, we go through, and he's over there, and he, you know, he saw me coming. He saw me coming, and all of a sudden, I lean over, and I go on the table, put my hands up, and he said, can you tell me a story, Daddy? Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, what's up, man? And he goes through, and so Norman... Stories. So Norman, our camera guy, is I'm like, hey, you know Rad Fink and all that stuff. He's like, well, yeah, who doesn't? And I'm like, that's little daddy. Yeah. He's like, he's like no way. And, and then I'm Bags like, buys him a coffee cup and and lets him go to town. And you know he signs this guy, you know, <laughs> dude. He did it, and we filmed the whole thing. Okay. My camera guy about fell over. He's like, oh my god, right in front of me. He's right. Yeah, Rob, there. Rob didn't yep. know it either. Yeah. Off, did off. You, have you seen on his on the counter? He's got he's got Big Daddy Ross paintbrush uh, box. From Knott's Berry Farm. Yeah, I did. He's got it there. Oh my Does he god! Even it? Does he really? I, oh my god. I, wow. Luckily, no, Dennis or uh, Little Daddy Roth. No. Oh, now we're named. That? Yeah. I did this. Here's the handle, and I went. Oh I, my I got god. to hold right where yeah. Big Daddy Roth would nice. carry this into do a that, job that at Knott's Berry Farm. It was so right. amazing. I just geeked out on it for like <laughs> for sure. Oh man, look at the oh the way he did that. It's fun. so true though. I mean, that's royalty right there. It's that, for that, sure. That is the the in the pantheon of of all graphic motorsport guys. That that's him. I mean, he's not yeah. the only guy that's ever done crazy stuff. But when you yeah. go back to what you're talking about, like with Grave Digger, like there was a guy that started. Yeah. You yeah. Know, now look at how big monster trucks are. Yeah. And Fred, oh, Fred, Fred, Fred Buman was the guy who originally did the Grave Digger paint job. He's dead, but Fred Buman was yeah. an amazing guy. But you I mean you you, you you look there was Bigfoot and and there was all that whole craze and stuff. But you Grave like Grave Digger, I think changed the game. He, yeah. Yeah. And then graphic wise in, in merchandising, I think. Yeah, well, no, I think I think Johnny's on to something though, because like what I and I respect this. The industry that we're touching up there right now is, is like that is one of my I, I love all those guys. All yeah. those adventure guys, because I'm friends with Chandler and Dennis and all these other guys, you know, Jeff Dane, King Kong. I mean, all the epic ones uh, ever Jasper USA one. I'm like whole history book on these guys. But it's true when they first started out and they were doing and a lot of people don't realize that when they first started out with Bigfoot and USA one back in the day, Jeff Dane or King Kong, those were the three icons right yep. there. And it was mud drags, mud drags, right. mud drags. Yep. nobody did anything. Mud bogs, and, baby. And, and mud bogs, and yeah. that's how it all started. But like you're saying, Johnny, it changed because Bigfoot, when it was going through, everybody didn't know, you know, they thought it was the footprint or whatever. And just like the little cartoon of the, of the truck on the side of Bigfoot, right? And it's kind of like squiggly Bigfoot, right. the iconic one. It's on. Oh, yeah. Somebody drew that up. His buddy drew that up because Bob Chandler, the name of it, the presence always, everybody's like, oh, you know, it's Bigfoot because the footprint, the tires. No, it's because Bob Chandler couldn't keep his foot out of the gas. It was caught in a break. Right. Thing. So, just those fun stories, and yeah. I've had down and talked with those dudes for years. And when you're going through and changing the game, they didn't understand when Dennis Anderson came about. Like you, you not the not the paint scheme. It was killer because the red neon light and all this stuff. Yep. Dennis the Anderson would actually go through after the show, and you know this. What Johnny's about to touch base on is you go through and you do it. So after they would do the TNT side by side races, blah blah, and Grave Diggers maybe a little bit heavier. Door, he wanted to just go out and he goes, "Can I go freestyle?" That's it. 
And I that's, show you what I can and do. that's what it is. And boom, there's a mic drop. He would For just sure. say that, that kind of stuff, man. It. And he changed the game. Totally. And that's how that was started because, yes, every one of those guys are pioneers of industry, just like you guys are with your artists and you with everybody that we know, the graphic design and stuff. Mm-hmm. Those guys change the game because all it takes is one to change it up just a little bit. Right. And next thing you know, they change it. Bob Chandler changed the chassis. Also, next thing you know, are going through. And they started going says set of side by side races. They would just go ballistic and jump. Now they're jumping dirt piles. I mean, you, yeah, they 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 40, spawned, 50 feet in the air. They spawned an industry me? out of passion and just redneck and fun stuff. Right. Hold, hold my beer. Out, motor motor guys. <laughs> I yes. Hold my beer. Hold my right. beer stuff. You know, oh yeah. Dennis Anderson said that he said in his early going, "I'll take this old junk and dig your grave." That's where the name right. came from, and he was cocking off to another guy in Virginia Beach. <laughs> yeah. He said, "I'll take this so old junk and dig your grave." And then when he came, when he came out and he put the the he put like Bigfoot's name and USA One alongside the truck in the very beginning, like on the tombstone. Yeah, it was awesome. I was like, dude, that's so cocking we off <laughs> for sure. And we were we were kids, man. Yeah. And that all started the whole thing of. Bringing like the WWF style kind of atmosphere well, I in, mean, in, that, in, there's, in Monster Rush. We can look at all those things. Like, there's a reason why Darth Vader's a, a beloved character. He, he's the bad guy. <laughs> yeah. You know, we like the monster. They're the bad guys. The, the, all the you like the bad guys. That sometimes. was Brad Fink. The nemesis. Brad Fink Hero. was the anti yeah. Mickey Mouse for yeah, sure. Sure. And yeah. boy, do I love that now more than ever. For sure. It's yeah. funny, the the origins of so many of those, you know, I was talking to uh, Keith Eccles, a pinstriper, yeah. you know, that's gone from, you know, he's, he's, oh my God, he's, he's got some nuts. stories. He is legendary. Oh, he was telling me the story about uh, the flying eyeball, you know, and he yep, was Von saying Dutch. with Von Dutch, he had this rubber eyeball that he had cut in half. Yep. And when he was, you know, late night at the, at the shop and painting, he would lick the thing and stick it to his forehead <laughs> And he would take it. and he would take two uh, pinstriping brushes and put them in his ears, yeah. and walk around with that. And there a photo? There's a photo somewhere yeah, yeah, of that. Some, yeah, and then somebody, you know, they started sketching him. Cool. And, he, and there you go. There's the flying eyeball. And what's weird though is in those early days, he was he looked like a, a straight laced, like an English teacher. Right. <laughs> yes. But Von Dutch didn't look like the no. avant garde guy you, that and, he be, ended up being. And you know, and on the podcast I had a couple weeks back with Little Daddy. You know Von Dutch worked for worked for Daddy, right? I, yep. I did not know. That yep. was that was so again Robert the name Williams. dropping Robert Robert Williams. I mean the names that came out are just like when I was just talking with Foose about all everybody who worked for Boyd Cotting and American Hot right. Like you go back and now you look you go to the Big Daddy. Yep. They all work from like everybody's like, well, you know, a lot of people, unless you're like really history buffs like that, you know, they don't know Von Dutch or too much. They just yep. oh, it's really cool, it's a flying eyeball. Kids, yep. I mean it's yeah, like, but it's it's cool that's carrying on though. I look sure, at it. Absolutely. But when little daddy said he's like, Oh, yeah, and Dutch was there, you know, after school and we're doing all this other stuff. And when he said that, he just does it so quick. <laughs> yeah, like it's, it's just oh, second nature. After school when Von Dutch was over. Right. Or or it was <laughs> yeah, we'd go to Dutch's Freaking, pool. Dutch's yeah. pool. Dutch's pool. Dutch had a pool. He brought up a story, bro. I don't like oh my <laughs> wait, yeah. what? And he's like, Von Dutch had a pool. Von Dutch had a pool. And his parents hadn't had a pool yet, so they they he would yeah, uh, Uncle, Von, Daddy, Uncle Von Dutch. Big That's Daddy would roll up in the driveway, <laughs> tell the kids, "Get in the car, we're going to Dutch's house. We're getting the pool." Nice. Oh, yeah, that was the weekend. Man. That was just it, the weekend. Was, it was just the weekend at Von Dutch's house. That was, that's all it was, man. It was just like I'm like, dude, I'm like, and he was just talking to me about how like no just, big deal. And yeah, now, you know, yeah. yeah, and now you go through about and, name drop. and like we were talking just about the when we were over by Shutton's place, obviously, and I mean, yes, you're gonna go, but the Orbitron when the Orbitron first came out. And the Orbitron came out at an autorama like this, you know, is yeah. going through. And he started it up and he started it up. And it's, it's an epic story by Little Daddy. It's not oh, our, our last pocket. You got to check it out. And the motor flew apart. Like, pieces were flying out. It's it's a regular story. Wow. And now the Orbitron is all restored, sitting obviously over in Shutton's yep. place. Yeah. But the story went to just the, the premise of doing that yeah. at an autorama back in the 60s. You're talking like 64, 65, when he's building these epic vehicles. And it flies apart. Oh, that was yeah. Rotar you're talking oh, about. Rotar, I'm sorry. Rotar, sorry. Yep. Yeah. I'm so, thank you for correcting that. I don't want to have that. Right, dude. No, I'm like, I'm like a, I'm a, little came bit of, I'm a big daddy rough. Fan. I know you're <laughs> <laughs> glad, I just want to glad <laughs> yeah. I never want to claim an expert and all that stuff. <laughs> but I just I know the story and it's amazing. When, when he told me this, it was unbelievable. And little daddy said he goes, he goes in there interviewing his dad, he's like, he goes, So what did you think? He's like, uh, when all the parts came flying off in the crowd, and I'll sit somebody he goes, I was just really hoping they weren't going to open it up and see there was no serial numbers on the motor. He just told you that story before. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, and dude, the motor where they used to get motors from for the models and stuff. It's you look at Johnny's like I got one. I know that story, <laughs> and that, that's one of those ones. Like, should we talk about that? Album? He did it, so I'm going there. <laughs> that's awesome. Super great. 
Yeah. Tell us the story. What do, what do you you, oh, you know it's, it? It's the one where him and uh, him his dad and somebody else found a found a <laughs> container full of engines, <laughs> and those uh, uh, container full of engines uh, suddenly disappeared. Oops. <laughs> wow. He put them in they have no idea where they had what yeah, happened. To those them. were double hump. Wow. Yes, there's no so, humps on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The story nice. that they got, and so you know, we had a presence of it too. Um, you know, little daddy was. You know, a lot of people don't realize it too. And he, he, I mean, Big Daddy, I'm sorry, he was one of the original creators. Johnny, correct me if I'm wrong here, what, of the original Hells Angels stuff that was going on. That, well, he was that, definitely, uh, when uh, Big Daddy started Chopper's Magazine, from what I understand, yeah. uh, Little Daddy would, would talk about. But, yeah, it was a big, he was well, a, involved was in the, it. He was that was the culture. It. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, if he was going to be the kind of the outlaw guy that he was, he was building weird stuff, using Volkswagen engines and everybody else yeah. doing V8s and stuff. Yeah. Like the system. It, it totally was that that deal. And then he really got into bikes and choppers and the trikes and and then went off into that that whole situation. But yeah. that was a big deal for him. It was creative, um, creative deal guy for I, sure. I, I look at the, how this all started back in the day, like in any of these industries that we have going on, like you're going through like Little Daddy and you got, you know, you got everybody's going on, the monster trucks all stuff. And he, I mean, evil, obviously, that's why we're here today. Mm-hmm. The marketing that these dudes did back in the day to sell their stuff and t-shirts like it was crazy when you talk to little daddy how many t-shirts this kid had to make when he was younger right was insane <laughs> like it's you're insane. talking he's hand silk screening the shirts yes I mean, yeah and then he was talking about how like i don't know if you've ever seen the old school uh uh ones where it had like multicolor of like fluorescence yeah big daddy roth built this machine that would do the spray so they'd lay down the and uh, it's a spray little daddy was telling the story he goes hey dad why don't we lay down that color first and then or, or was it the over it was lay down the screen print first then the color yeah and he's like because well, this is how we do it and they so like, oh, oh, and he's like oh, oh this is okay. how we do it man but, but he's it's like just, hours after school just get the shirt oh how cool put it in the machine that? and go Psh, and then that's the next one and then, wow how but man. that guy to figure a way to mass produce t-shirts yeah. Yeah. But you, and look at Autorama today and, and all of that hallmark is everywhere. Go ask any of the guys that are working this table. Like there's a specific way you fold T shirts. Yeah. That are yeah. a specific way that his dad taught him. Yeah. He he we were at uh Franken totally. Frankenmuth and he was telling me a story. He goes, You know, my dad used to put us we used to put uh the shirts in cellophane bags and and we'd go, Dad, no he, he the way he says it, Pop, why are we doing that? And then he goes, Well, because 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 it's slippery, you know, they'll fall off. And he and he goes, yeah, they'll fall off, and then people will pick them up. I mean, he literally oh, learned all outrageous yeah. marketing one on one. And the sun and the sun reflects off that that. So from a distance, you're gonna see the little reflection. I, yeah. I mean, if that, I might have been maybe I'm, but that was. But all that I, I got from a I mean, the table. Yeah. It up. Oh, did you want to buy that? Oh, <laughs> yeah, and that's so cool. I, I mean, you look so today cool. of of uh, you know just Julie Mays graphic <laughs> yeah, totally, graphic man. Tees. I mean, graphic tees literally pioneered yeah. from Ed Roth. I mean, before Ed Roth, there were no graphic tees. I mean, people were mm-hmm. you know before that, man. It was just like I mean, t- t-shirts at that day were considered like underwear. You That's didn't right, go right. out wearing right. your yeah. t-shirt. You wore a nice button-down shirt, well, and it wasn't until you know you had That's like right. uh, uh, who was the the uh, the the actor? Um, what's his name? Oh shoot! The, um, did what? Like um, like the the streetcar named Desire. Come on, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> streetcar named Desire. <laughs> Marlon Brando. Oh, Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, popularized yeah. wearing the, the white T-shirt. Yeah, yeah. Right. And that was like this revolutionary yeah. thing because yeah. like a guy walking around outside with his the underwear. Water, right, shirt. Yeah, and and then to go from that to where then Ed Roth was putting these oh, images, images on there, there. and it was the king. crazy. Well, it was uh, literally the pioneer of the graphic T-shirt. But I mean, not, it was just before in these screen printing, that guy was sitting in a corner at a booth, airbrushing. Yeah, airbrushing. Yeah. Yeah. This is. Man, because so then, then, it's then little funny. daddy said it was like in the sixties, right? Big daddy was the crazy. Yeah, in, well, fifties, but I mean, little daddy was sort of it was like in, in the fifties, sixties. Because there, there's even like an early. Have you seen the the uh, Leave It to Beaver episode? Oh, yeah. When they go and they find these nope. monster T-shirts, yeah, I didn't see and that they, one. And the, all the kids so are cool. buying them, yeah, and one. the parents are freaking out. Yeah, they're they're it was an Ed Roth monster. Yeah, you got to yeah, you gotta do check it out. I'm saying I'm going to YouTube that. It's YouTube. the craziest cool. thing. It's and it was like home. I'm YouTubing that. And yeah. all the parents were freaking out. Like, going for that. Thank you for telling me that. <laughs> it's cool. I mean, I it's love that. It's I can't believe you brought that one up. I forgot all about that one. Oh yeah. Then came the roaches. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Roach, Roach is, as in Roach, the graphic designer yeah. Roach. Yeah, yeah. there was Mouse Roach. Yeah. Well, I so loved him yeah. because in so in the seventies, my best friend Eddie had a paper route, and we'd go and do his route. He had a huge route, and I'd help him. We'd collect. And then we'd go to the local T-shirt shop that opened when they had the iron-on press, and they had the books where you could go through. Yeah. Uh, early the, Remember oh, yeah, the gremlin sure. with you flipping you off oh, the yeah. gremlin one and all oh, that? Oh, yeah. And Roach was the, the only, truck in and the only Roach was the only guy doing, and it was definitely an homage from Big Daddy, the high gear hauler and all these exaggerated right. yeah. gun warts and all the stuff. Yeah, it was in these rigs. Yeah. Same. So yeah, so I got in same, Roach. Same. Yep. And and then in the nineties, I would go on eBay and buy all the old stock of the uh, iron ons of Roach awesome. stuff, and I have a collection to this day. Yeah. That's so, it's so cool. So funny. I, I, I that was the stuff, man. You, you oh, yeah. spend your twelve bucks I, and a shirt at the iron on. And I forget fall. how oh, how much. Shirt. That yeah. I really loved those old T-shirts, right. the old yeah. T-shirts. And you yeah. went to death. Oh my god! Like, oh, they're they terrible. Never breathed, but it was. Oh, remember you play outside, and if you had a bad iron on your nipples, it all be itchy. Yeah. <laughs> I remember going to school like a Duke's a Hazard. Yeah, ball. oh yeah. And then, well, then we go, then we go to Cartoons Magazine, and you're pulling Cartoons, out Cartoons, baby. The, they used yeah. to have the transfers in those. Oh and you're yeah, like, the shitty things. They were awesome. And the hair. Oh, yeah. Tie all cool. that back. You know, we're now we just announced it recently. Get to, yeah, that's so awesome. With dude. Motor Mania, we we struck a deal with Cartoons Magazine. Yeah. We're we are doing breaking a on the podcast right. today at Motor Mania special Media Edition. With... Evil Knievel oh, it is so edition. It is it's gonna be so the, cool. the, the the debut. It's gonna uh it's for uh the, you, the issue fifty two, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh all of the artists are gonna work it's in so Evil Knievel epic, into bro. their it's... scripts. Including Trousley and everybody. And this is awesome. insane. So we're we, are you working with Lathan and everybody at the museum on this? So we so what we did is they again Thomas I'm gonna interrupt. But Thomas is like, hey, Mark from Cartoon Magazine wants to talk to you about doing this and bringing it in there. I'm like, okay, what do we got? So he's Bro. like, yeah. So he's like, yeah. So and Thomas brought it on and, we're, and I said, man, we got to get some other guys involved here. So we started talking and everybody knows kind of how we did the tour, how Thomas brought this to us. We brought it out there and we we're just gonna do a docu series, blah blah. That's cool. Going forth. And then that we were going to go get some artwork done on the back of the rocket because so I do yeah. the champion Japan. We're going to get some stars. So we get shut and involved. I was told I could go pick up the rocket because, you know, I'm one of the main owners of the company, blah, blah. I said, dude, I'm going to represent. They're like, yeah, we'll just ship it from, you know, uh, Darnell's place over there. I'm like, wait a minute. You're telling me I get to go. I can go pick up the rocket and take it over like something I could always maybe see in glass. Like, dude, I'm flying over here to go pick this thing up. I'm driving it over there. So that's what I did. I actually literally did that. I rented a rider truck. I, I, I yeah. did the whole thing. It was so fun. And then I saw the dragster and all sort of stuff. So we started talking about it. Long story short. So it was a cool little story for the last seven, eight months that we were doing, collaborating and doing a docu series and filming at the Shutton's place. And so next thing you know, he calls me. He's like, Yeah, Mark from Cartoons Magazine wants to talk to you God about the story. Bless. So I'm like, All right. So he's like, What do you want to do? And I said, Well, you know, again, just like how we just were talking about the bike and the rocket, it's all been done before, blah, blah. I said, Why don't we tell the story about how we're bringing evil to 2024? 